If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to Downfall Network for more cool content. What's up everyone, Thrawn's Metal here once again. I'm the Croc Nick. I'm Jam and John. And we have an album review for you. So one we actually kind of eh, had on our radar a little bit was the latest EP from Inferi of Sunless Realms. This also comes out on the 9th of October on the Artisan Era Records. These guys formed in 2006 in Nashville, Tennessee, and pretty much they're kind of a blend of technical death metal, melodic death metal, and symphonic? death metal? Yeah, I'd say that's a thing. Um, yeah. I think that's reasonably close to what they're going for. There are a lot of um, sort of synthy parts that scream sort of symphony-esque yeah. or very dark symphonies. Gives it like a neoclassical type of feel. Definitely. This also has ex-members of Vale of Panath in it and current members of A Loathing Requiem. So, similar bands in terms of style. And the name is actually a reference to Harry Potter. It is the name of uh, reanimated corpses by wizards. I don't know, I'm not a Harry Potter fan necessarily. I've seen the, I've seen the movies, they're all right. It's true, bad. yeah. I've, I've seen the movies, I've read the books. The books are way better than the movies. So, if you're already looking at the cover here, there is a lot of Lovecraft in here, and Lovecraft definitely seems to be hitting quite a stride in popularity again. Yes. And this band pretty much does their own sort of take on it musically. Generally, most of the Lovecraft metal I listen to, it sounds like Morbid Angel. Yeah, yeah. These guys don't. No. The Abhorrent Art, the opening track, pretty much opens with a nice little atmospheric part, builds into a really cool opening, and just explodes into blast beats, intricate riffing, yep. lots of notes, like a million notes a minute. Yeah, the, the, the band is very, very talented. We've uh, seen them. I, right, yeah, we saw them with, what, Rivers of Nile and... Alter Beast. Alter Beast, yeah. The bass work on this album, and you can actually hear the bass. It's very clear. Lot, yeah, it's very clear. First of all, very clear production across the board. The rhythm section, the whole band's very talented. Yes. <laughs> The drums are almost always flying. This this is a very fast 22 minutes for the most yes. part. Yes. I have to say, the drum sound, mainly the bass drum, I'm not a big fan of super clicky drums. I'm not either. And man, these things are clicky. Oh man, and instantly you heard oh, yeah. it. Just like, oh man, no. Yeah. <laughs> Everything else sounds good. Like the snare has a good pop to it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a very polished mix. Very. And. I don't know, like, I, I used to be a big fan of that sort of mix years ago, but I like my death metal more gritty. Yeah, I've days. become the same way. Like, I I used to be all about technical death metal. All yeah. about it. But uh, over time, as I progressed as a music fan and, and got into the darker things and the grittier things and, and whatnot, I like my death metal to have fucking punch. Yeah. <laughs> it, it should sound like it's written by monsters. Yes. Not and, robots. You know, you get some of that on here. But again, it's very polished. Again, that's another word for it. I'm trying to think of other adjectives. But that is really the overall feel on this. It is just fine-tuned till all the grit is just yeah. kind of wiped off. But with that sort of production, it kind of lends itself to tech metal because you can hear all the instrumentation, which there is a lot. A lot of notes being played on those guitars. I love the harmonies, dude. The harmonies, the yeah. guitar harmonies in this band are disgusting. Lots of neoclassical play. Yeah, yep. And to complement that, or to sometimes overpower that, a lot of synths. These guys have always liked synths, though when we saw them, they didn't have a synth player. I don't think they even had a bass player. But <laughs> yeah, right? they had the bass tracks playing through the PA, and it worked. But in this album, there are spots where these synths overpower... Everything. Everything. And... Yeah. It just feels like the synths have something against this awesome band. Like, no, I don't want them to hear it. I want the spooky stuff. Like, most of all, in the second song, the uh, Eldritch Evolution, like, the synths in there are definitely too hot. Very loud. <laughs> and it sucks because, I mean, there are points where you really can't hear, like, the main riff that's carrying it. You can hear the lead, of course. The leads yeah. are super loud and really... Really good trade-offs, too, in terms mm -hmm, of, mm -hmm. like, the lead guitarist going back and forth, or at least it might be two lead guitarists. I know there's two guitarists in there. But, again, you have something that is overpowering that. 
And then pretty much at that point, you're just hearing the drums and the vocals, which the vocals I'm hearing are really good. Yeah, I do like the vocals. Good alternating back and forth between highs and lows, very similar to Black Dahlia Murder. Or Alter Beast. Alter Beast again, yeah. yeah. And pretty much the next track is also kind of a lot of the same thing. Spellbound, mm -hmm. Unearthed Terror, which, cool name, but it really doesn't distinguish itself much from at least two-thirds of the opening track and the second track. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's pretty much that same style. It is sort of a blender of a million notes on there. There's a lot of technical proficiency, again, but it doesn't generate a lot of earworms, at least for me. It didn't really for me either. There, I wanted something to latch onto besides noodling. Noodling is cool. It is. It is cool. It's, it's cool. It's great. But not when it's the dominant part of the song. Yeah, if and, there was like a section of just the noodling. Yeah, dude, if it was if, if it was like pretty much any metal band I like, there's noodling in pretty much every metal band I like. Yeah. But it's not the most dominant thing in the room. Yeah. There is a section in Eldritch Terror where the solo pretty much takes over a good chunk of the middle. And that actually kind of worked there because it was just a section of just really like long leads and trade-offs and such. Yeah. It wasn't all that while, you know, the synths are going really, you know, nuts and the vocalist is doing a whole different thing there too. But Spellbound really just kind of sticks with like some, you know, necrophagia slash obscura mm -hmm. style riffs, a little bit of at the gates sort of melody in there, and then a lot of keyboards. But this actually does get better towards the end. The summoning, pretty interesting little lead up to it. Don't know if it was super necessary, but it was kind of cool. It has like this little muted speaking. Yeah, yeah. Cthulhu. He's speaking. Yeah, to us. he's speaking. It's and a word from the sponsors. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. But it was cool because I mean, it kind of plays off again the Lovecraft vibe. That's what abduction I think might sound like. As much as I like the atmosphere it generates, when it comes down to synths, I'm still kind of iffy. There are certain kinds of synths I really like, and then others I don't like. This has the kind that I don't like where they are trying to imitate strings. Like if you had a cello, a viola, or a violin all playing, like a really cool little bit. Yeah. I think that would sound a lot more natural, and I think it would actually sound a little bit creepier, too. And it would definitely be something cool to have live, especially when, like, you know, you get a night with this band or something, and they roll out a string section. That'd be pretty neat. But when you get down to, yeah, it's torn. When you get to the last song, holy shit. <laughs> This saved it yeah. for me, to be honest. And the intro kind of piggybacks off the instrumental, except they're using instruments this time. But for the first time in this whole EP, it wasn't all about noodles and technicality as much as it was riffs. Yes, and really good ones. Structure, yeah, really good riffs the whole time. The synths were still prominent, but I think the fact that the song also slowed down a little bit well, right. It wasn't balls to the wall either. It's the first yeah. time on the album the you know the BPM dropped below two hundred. <laughs> like it was, it was actually had some groove and some hooks to it. And Solid breakdowns. Yes. And Woo. I think again, while the synths were very present, I didn't absolutely get taken out of the song by them. They actually contributed to the atmosphere and the fact that there was empty spaces. Mm -hmm. It isn't again just constant, you know, like riffing or noodling. There are moments there where they're just kind of crafting a really cool breakdown or like a really cool vocal part. Yep. It actually took the time to just slowly build. Like when it finally does get fast, it kind of takes its time too. This is the longest track on here. It's just shy of six minutes. But by then, you're like, okay, yeah, you can bring in the fast part now because you yeah, exactly. built it up well. Yeah, exactly. Because it's not, again, it's not a dominant thing. It's just like, oh, here's something really cool we came up with real quick. Let's go back to the riffs. And the lead work in this... This one had feel. Yes, this one had feel to it. My problem with the leads in the other songs is, again, while they were great leads, they sounded too robotic. Like, they didn't have enough feeling or enough soul behind them. But the leads in this song, they took their time on. They really captured the feeling of the song. This was supposed to be the slower, big epic, and I think they absolutely nailed that. Yes. It doesn't feel cluttered, mm -hmm. and that is a big thing on here because... A good chunk of these tracks can just feel like if you blink, you'll miss it, and there's not a lot of spots that slow down. Right. There are parts that will slow down. We're like, we're going to do a breakdown. We're going to slow it down for a little bit, and then, nope, sorry, drummer had a fit and had to go blasting. <laughs> right. It sounds like an actual song versus unbridled chaos. Yeah. Which, I mean, they're granted the melodic chaos. It's still catchy in its own right. It's just sometimes too much, and this less is more philosophy on this song in particular. Yes. I think really works. Yep. 
I mean, this was the standout track for me. Hands down, same yeah. here. The second I heard them actually grooving on something, I was like, hold on. And then it didn't really, that tempo didn't really raise until the end, and I was like, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so overall, I'm going to give this three stars. This is a pretty solid EP. Now, I mean, some of the technical moments, while they are good, they kind of took me out of it a little bit just because it felt very samey from track to track for a bit. But when it came down to actually nailing it on a formula that I would love to see on future albums. Yes. Yeah, dude, for real. Like, really, I hope, really nailing I hope more of this appears on a full length. Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, that, that was the awesome. Aeon's Torn, if you go with that structure, man, you're going to... Woo! That was Ooh. absolutely awesome. But yeah, I would definitely recommend this if you love technical, melodic music, mm -hmm. but still like some, you know, like gritty, dirty death metal. Just not that dirty. It's just kind of wiped off a bit. <laughs> it's just polished dirty yeah. death metal. I'm going to give it a three as well. Weedly Wands are great. <laughs> They're great. Noodles are great. Playing fast, heavy death metal. I mean, stuff like Aborted, dude. Fucking yeah. I love Aborted. It's all great, but I feel like there needs to be... More of a hook, more like you said, earworms, yes. stuff to get me involved. Other than going, well, that's cool. Well, that's cool. Well, I can't do that. I can't do that. Uh, that is that guy playing a twelve-string guitar. Like, that's great. It's great. I'm glad you can do that. It's a good listen. It's just not really in my wheelhouse anymore. Almost, I want to say like, it except changed. for that last song. That last song is a killer, and that's what I want to see more of. Absolutely. If my opinion means anything, if it doesn't, <laughs> well, there you go. So, if you enjoyed the review, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe, because we do stuff like this all, all the, the time. time. We will catch you later. See ya.